Allegedly, over 50 celebrities wrote letters in support of Danny Masterson. 30 years to life. I'm sitting here having compassion for someone that's going to jail for the rest of their life. The Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis controversy has gotten worse. He is an ongoing harm to society. It is not like warm apple pie. He's like, one rule, don't do anything stupid and mess this up. Because if you mess it up, you mess it up for everybody. In 1998, a 19-year-old Ashton Kutcher would first meet Mila Kunis on the set of That 70s Show, when she was just 14. During an interview on The Howard Stern Show, Ashton recalled doing her chemistry homework for her in between takes while boasting about being her first kiss, saying, It was really weird. I was like, isn't this illegal? I don't know. And it was really awkward, because I'm like a 19-year-old kid. He also went on to say that she had has a diary from when she was a kid, where she wrote, Oh, this guy's hot. In the year 2000, a 20-year-old Wilmer Valderrama, the actor behind the character Fez, which is an acronym for foreign exchange student, started dating a 16-year-old Mandy Moore. According to Mandy, the two met when she was just 15. I met him at a photo shoot for like some teen magazine, literally. When I was 15, 15. This relationship would last two years, and during a Howard Stern interview, Wilmer would go out of his way to brag about taking Mandy Moore's virginity. I will say this, it is not like warm apple pie. However, Mandy would later deny these claims, saying, He did not take my virginity. I dated him when I was 16 and 17. I loved him, and I still love him. He's a very good friend, and that's why I was so shocked by it, because not only was it a fib, but it was so unlike him, and so uncharacteristic. In 2002, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis would appear on an episode of The Rosie O'Donnell Show and sit down for a very awkward interview. An interview where Mila recalls her first kiss. A first kiss that actually happened on that 70s show with a 19-year-old Ashton when she was just 14. According to Mila, Danny Masterson actually told Ashton that he would give him $10 if he turned it into a French kiss. I mean, you know, Ash was attractive and I was a 14-year-old little girl and I was extremely scared for my life. Then Danny goes and goes, dude, I'll give you $10 if you French kiss her. What would you stick my stick your tongue in my mouth or some What? No, 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 no. For $10. You're making it sound like it was like really bad. It, okay. The entire interview is pretty hard to watch, as neither Rosie O'Donnell nor the audience laugh at any point during the interview. In 2003, season two of Ashton Kutcher's celebrity prank show, Punked, premiered on MTV, featuring pranks pulled on celebrities such as Usher, Missy Elliott, and Hilary Duff. During the Hilary Duff segment, Ashton had this to say about the actress. Hilary Duff is in Lizzie McGuire, and she's one of the girls that we're all waiting for to turn 18 along with the Olsen twins. At the time, Hilary Duff was just 15, and the Olsen twins were 17. The following year in 2004, Danny Masterson would appear on an episode of Late Night with Conan O'Brien to promote that 70s show, and after Danny tells a joke about his Conan followed up, saying he's heard about him and that he will be caught soon. Um, I've heard about you. Uh, and you'll be caught soon. I know you will. I will. With everything that's since come to light involving Danny Masterson's history of sexual assault, some online speculate that Conan was actually referencing the rumors that had already been circulating within the Hollywood circle. I ended up getting the job and uh, I didn't Working know. With me. Yeah, and she was as hot as she was, you know. Like, this Four <laughs> Fortune, she was even hotter. That same year, a 24-year-old Wilmer Valderrama would start dating Lindsay Lohan right after she turned 18. And although the relationship would only last two months, Lindsay Lohan would release a song titled Over, which peaked at number one on Billboard's Hot 100 singles chart and remained there for three weeks. Years later, Lindsay would admit on an episode of Ellen that the song was written about her rocky relationship with a That 70s Show actor. Only a couple of months after his breakup with Lindsay Lohan, Wilmer would start dating 18-year-old actress Misha Barton from the hit television show The O.C. In 2005, a 27-year-old Ashton Kutcher would start dating his future wife, 42-year-old Demi Moore. At the time, Ashton and Demi were one of Hollywood's most talked about couples, as Demi was 15 years older than him. In a 2019 memoir released by Demi Moore, titled Inside Out, she opens up about her marriage and even mentions that she broke her 20-year-long period of sobriety after 
after Ashton told her that he doesn't believe alcoholism exists. According to her memoir, Ashton was drinking a glass of red wine when he said, I don't know if alcoholism is a real thing. I think it's all about moderation. Demi would go on to drink a beer from their hotel mini fridge because she wanted to show her then new boyfriend that she could consume alcohol in moderate doses, saying, I didn't think. This is a kid in his 20s who has no idea what he's talking about. According to the memoir, Demi Moore's alcohol and substance intake began to increase after she suffered a miscarriage while six months pregnant with her now husband, Ashton Kutcher's child. Alcohol and substances became a coping mechanism for her to help subdue the pain she was experiencing within her relationship. According to her memoir, Ashton started suggesting that they bring a third party into the bedroom and wanting to appease her husband, Demi Moore obliged. Until one day she caught him cheating on her with a 21-year-old woman he met while bowling with Demi Moore's daughter. Apparently, Ashton justified his cheating by saying that they already had blurred the lines in their marriage once they introduced a third party into the bedroom, pushing Demi further and further into substance abuse as it had become her coping mechanism in the relationship. The memoir also alleges that Ashton was resentful of her and stopped supporting her once she had to detox from prescription painkillers. After developing an addiction following a dental procedure, Procedure. Ashton eventually grew tired of Demi's alcohol intake and ended the relationship in 2011. Her memoir details the confusion she felt as Ashton had encouraged her to go in this direction earlier in their relationship. Despite the relationship ending in 2011, the divorce wasn't finalized until 2013 and Demi Moore has remained sober since 2012. In 2012, a now single Ashton Kutcher would find himself in hot water for sporting brown makeup and speaking in an Indian accent in a commercial for pop chips. I'm Raj, I'm a Bollywood producer, I'm looking for the most delicious thing on the planet, like Kardashian hot. I would give that dog a bone. Yes, I was in a milking contest and I won it. I like Snooky. According to ABC News, Indian Americans quickly bashed the ad and Ashton Kutcher, who served as the brand's president of pop culture. However, Ashton never commented on the controversy himself. In 2017, the Los Angeles Police Department announced that they would begin to investigate actor Danny Masterson after three women came forward, alleging that he assaulted them in the early 2000s. Over the remainder of 2017, more women would come forward with similar accusations against the actor. According to People magazine, one woman claims she woke up to Danny her, saying, I tried pushing him off me and saying, no, I don't want to have sex with you. He wouldn't stop, so I did something that I knew would make him angry and likely to get off me. I pulled his hair. He has these rules. No touch hair rule. No touch face rule. He had this thing about his hair, so I knew if I pulled it really, really hard, he would get off me. But what he did was hit me. The woman said in court that Danny Masterson smacked her across the face with his fist, spit on her, and called her white trash. This same woman woman claimed that Danny her again after she blacked out. Apparently, she woke up in pain and later learned from Danny himself that he had raped her while she was unconscious. This victim apparently alerted ethics officials at the Church of Scientology, a church she had joined at the bequest of Danny, as he has famously been a longtime member himself. After alerting these ethics officials, they told her that she wasn't raped and discouraged her from alerting the police. Unfortunately, this wasn't the only time a victim of Danny's behavior wasn't taken seriously. In 2017, one of his victims was told by Netflix official Andy Yeatman, the then director of global kids content, that he didn't think the allegations were credible. At the time, both Danny Masterson and Ashton Kutcher were co-starring on a Netflix show titled The Ranch, making some people question if they didn't believe the allegations were credible or if they just didn't want the news coming out and affecting their new show. That same year, a man named Cedric Bixler Zavala from popular band At The Drive-In claimed that Scientologists killed his dog with rat poison after his wife, Chrissy Bixler, spoke out against Danny Masterson, claiming that he had raped her while they were dating in the late 90s. According to an Instagram post by Cedric, after his dog became ill, he noticed there was rat poison rolled up in raw meat all over his front and backyard. The post goes on to say, This is what Scientology does when you speak about the predators they protect. And in a post by Chrissy Bixler, 
She says, Scientology and Danny Masterson have now murdered two of my sweet baby dogs. Biscuit would have turned one this week. Baby Ethel, please take care of our little Bisky till we all meet again. How many times can a heart break? Cedric and his wife, along with other accusers, filed a lawsuit against Danny and the church, alleging stalking and harassment in an attempt to silence their allegations against the actor. As news of Danny Masterson's behavior began to spread, Netflix fired Danny from the ranch while he continued to maintain his innocence. And Andy Yeatman, the man who told one of Danny's victims that he doesn't believe the allegations are credible was let go by the company. The next year, in 2018, United Talent Agency, which had represented Danny for the last 20 years, officially cut ties with him. The next year, 2019, four of Danny's accusers filed a lawsuit against the actor and the Church of Scientology, claiming stalking and intimidation after they came forward with their stories. Although there were more women claiming to have been assaulted by Danny Masterson, in 2020, Danny was officially charged with forcibly three women in separate incidents between 2001 and 2003. All of the three alleged crimes happened in Danny's home, but in 2021, he would plead not guilty. And in 2022, Demi Lovato, Wilmer Valderrama's ex, released a song titled 29, a song which features the line, finally 29, funny, just like you were at the time, thought it was a teenage dream, just a fantasy, but was it yours or was it mine, 1729. Many have interpreted this song as being about her experience dating Wilmer since she was 17 at the time. And in 2023, Danny was convicted of two counts of by the jury after several days of deliberating. Apparently, when Jane Doe No. 1, a victim of Danny Masterson, was delivering her impact statement, she suffered intimidation from a family member of Danny Masterson, saying, I had my panic attack on stand. I ran to bathroom with my DA advocate, Rosario. I screamed into corner of bathroom. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't do this. I started splashing water on face. I see door opens, and I recognize girls smiling at me. Rosario looked at her and said we have to leave because didn't have space or grace to give me that space. I don't know if this is a game to them, but this is a real court, not a celebrity center. The girl referenced in the quote is Alana Masterson, Danny's sister. The quote goes on to say that Danny and his lawyer had packed the courthouse with their friends and supporters to intimidate the jury, even claiming they brought a South African man who assaulted one of the victims as a teen to the courthouse. Despite Masterson attempts at silencing his victims, he was ultimately sentenced to 30 years to life in prison for his actions. Following this, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, amongst other celebrities such as the actors who portrayed Red and Kitty on That 70s Show, wrote character letters to the judge, asking for leniency in his sentencing. Once the news broke of Ashton and Mila sending these letters, they received immediate overwhelming backlash from the internet, leading to the two of them posting an apology video. Where where instead of apologizing, they instead mentioned that only the judge was supposed to know about the letters. This shook many people, as it seemed out of character for Ashton and Mila due to their activism and because the general perception of the cast of that 70s show has remained as goofy, silly, wholesome people. Not to mention that Mila had starred in the film Luckiest Girl Alive the year prior, a film where Mila portrays a woman coming to terms with being gang as a teenager, and the fact that both Mila and Ashton co-own an organization called Thorn, which exists to build tools to fight sexual assault against minors. Something people online also found odd about the letters they wrote to the judge was their emphasis on Danny's hatred of drugs. A segment of Ashton's letter reads, Any time that we were to meet someone or interact with someone who was on drugs or did drugs, he made it clear that that wouldn't be a good person to be friends with, and for me, that was an implication that if I were to do drugs, he wouldn't want to be friends with me. It's okay to discourage drug use, but does someone's disdain for substances make up for years of sexual abuse? It's also ironic when you factor in that Ashton broke Demi Moore's 20 years of sobriety after telling her he doesn't believe alcoholism exists, and that Danny, Ashton, and Mila all starred on a show famous for its depictions of cannabis use. Additionally, Ashton 
starred in the movie, Dude, Where's My Car? A movie about two stoners waking up with no recollection of the previous night that Entertainment Weekly has dubbed one of the best stoner movies of all time. Additionally, both Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis star in an NFT web series titled Stoner Cats, which was developed by Mila's production company, Orchard Farm Productions. Following the discourse online surrounding Ashton and Mila's off-note apology, Chrissy Bixler, one of Danny's victims, the same one whose dogs were murdered after speaking against the actor, posted to Instagram, reading, Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model keeps for you, ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. She also said, Dear Mila, I pray you begin to process what you experienced as a child on that set. Your old interviews are very telling. I encourage everyone to watch them and decide for yourself what you hear and see. Do so before they get scrubbed from the internet. I also know what happened in Toronto and after. Question. If that's what you view as a normal relationship with a big brother figure, then I feel very sad for you, and I hope you consider getting into therapy. You all must forget I was there the whole time those first five years of that 70s show. One name that hasn't come up once during the entirety of this video is Topher Grace, the main character of that 70s show. Back in the day, Topher received a lot of backlash after developing a reputation for being arrogant and standoffish. While the rest of the cast would often be photographed hanging out together, Topher was rarely seen with them off set, leading many believing that he felt above them and longed for higher profile acting jobs. With everything that's come to light, involved Involving the cast of that 70s show, it's difficult to not wonder if the real reason Topher Grace didn't associate with these people was because he didn't support what they were getting up to behind the scenes. Paying a 19-year-old man to French kiss a 14-year-old girl on set and him obliging is pretty brazen behavior, and Wilmer repeatedly finding himself dating young women is a little sketchy. Additionally, rumors have always circulated that Topher Grace didn't want to be associated with Danny Masters due to his ties with the church. Some speculate that the church was trying to recruit more celebrities by infiltrating Fox sitcoms, as they had already successfully done so on shows like That 70s Show, Grounded for Life, and The Simpsons. It's also worth mentioning that Danny successfully recruited Laura Preppen, the actress who played Donna on That 70s Show, after setting her up with his brother, Christopher Masterson, the older brother from Malcolm in the Middle. Although Laura Preppen has since left the church, photos of her and other cast members of that 70s show, like Mila Kunis and Deborah Jo Rupp, can be found partying at a Scientology benefit alongside Danny himself. When Topher Grace left the show following season 7, he was seen by fans as ego-driven, selfish, and big-headed. However, when Ashton left the show at the same time, he never got any bad press for doing so. Despite having his reputation tarnished for his standoffish behavior on set, today Today, Topher Grace is the only co-star from that 70s show who has a clean record. He didn't rape anyone, he didn't date any minors, he didn't encourage sexual assault on set, and he didn't write a letter to a judge trying to defend someone with several allegations against them. Topher Grace wasn't treated fairly by the fans when the show was airing, and he deserves some flowers. It's times like these where we're reminded that celebrities play by a different rulebook. It took over 20 years for victims of Danny Masterson's actions to receive justice, and although it must be satisfying for them, how do you heal wounds that were opened over 20 years ago, while the whole time you were being silenced, harassed, having your pets killed, all while watching your abuser amass a fortune, while other celebrities use their platforms to support him, lowering your chances of receiving your day in court. With Danny Masterson's sentencing behind us, hopefully victims can begin to heal, and hopefully their story will serve as a reminder that you never know how people truly are behind the scenes.